Angkor Wat is one of the man-made wonders of the world, buried deep in the forest of Southeast Asia. Cambodian culture issues from the walls of these thousand-year-old temples and wraps itself quietly, gently, around one's soul. It's hard to imagine what her people have endured, and even harder to understand why. Beginning with the war in neighboring Vietnam in the early 1970s that gave rise to Cambodia's genocidal Khmer Rouge regime, 30 years of continual civil war have destroyed the Cambodian economy, its health care, and its education system, leaving her one of the poorest countries in the world. Today, the average Cambodian family makes $350 per year. That's less than $1 per day. There is one doctor for every 8,000 people. She is a nation of 12 million, where more than half the population is under 15. One in five children will die before the age of five, mostly from diarrhea. Because the Khmer Rouge regime destroyed most of the school buildings and killed most of the teachers, the Cambodian education system was wiped out three decades ago and continues to stagger to its feet. 70% of the population remains illiterate. In this land of contrasts, where magnificent ancient history collides with epic human tragedy, my husband and I met our son Grady in an orphanage in 2001. While we were waiting to adopt him, we contacted American Assistance for Cambodia, a non-government, non-profit organization with a school construction project and asked how we could help. We ended up deep in the Cardamom Mountains in a village called Cherik Diek. In March of 2001, this is where about 50 of the children from Cherik Diek studied. It was the beginning of the monsoon season, and I asked what they would do when the rains came. No school when it rains. There were hundreds more children in the village whose parents did not bother sending them to study when their time could be better spent in the forest foraging for food. But the students present were eager to learn, and the teachers eager to teach. When I asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? I got a lot of blank stares. It was a dumb question in a world with no choices. But slowly, the children began to dream. What do you want to be a teacher? He wants to be a teacher. Are they on we also the teacher. She wants to be the teacher too. She wants to be a teacher. She wants to be a teacher. Hey, she wants to be a nurse or doctor. A nurse okay. or doctor, very good. Saying my only chance to be a nurse. Yeah, she wants to be a doctor. A doctor, very good. Although the challenges of the situation felt enormous, we decided that day to become partners with the children of Cherik Diek in the long, hard road out of poverty. If they would show up to study, we would make sure it was possible to learn. And the first item of business would be to build a new school. Just a few kilometers down the road, the village leaders had already selected a site for a new school building. The bricklayers and carpenters were ready to work. All they needed was a donor to match the $15,000 allocated by the World Bank. We had raised the funds from a network of friends and colleagues by selling photographs over the internet. The donation was made to American Assistance for Cambodia and construction of a new school building began. By the following school year, the building was ready. This footage was sent to us on a computer disk by our assistant in Phnom Penh after he delivered a new school uniform, shoes, and school supplies to every student and teacher on our behalf.
The Cambodian government requires children to wear a school uniform, and we did not want any child to be denied entrance because they didn't have one. The distribution ceremony was followed by a cool drink of water from the new water well. The student body had grown to 177 students. It seems that when we value the children's education, so do their parents. In 2003, I went to visit the school for the first time since it had been built. On the day of my arrival, the entire village turned out to welcome me with a dedication ceremony. The student body had grown to 250 children in grades 1 through 6, ranging in age from 7 to 16. Solar panel had been installed on the roof, but we did not have a computer or English teacher yet. I passed out more school supplies, and this time I brought with me art supplies. Colored pencils, watercolor paints, and white sheets of paper were passed out to the classrooms, and I asked the children to draw me a picture. For most, it was the very first picture they'd ever drawn. I also learned that the Cambodian teachers had no pay and slept on the cement floor of the school. We had been sending the teachers a food stipend of rice, dried fish, and soup mix for over a year and a half by the time I returned in January of 2005 for the opening of the new teacher's residence. The food and housing made it possible for the teachers to do their jobs and to consistently show up for work. Therefore, more children showed up for school, and the student body had now increased to 375. The students had a new playground that had been donated by a parent who was a truck driver from Phnom Penh. Although the pump to the water well had been broken by heavy use from the entire village, the school director had the students plant a garden and taking care of it was part of their daily chores. we fixed the well and donated an irrigation system so they could expand this project. With the arrival of a computer teacher from American Assistance for Cambodia, 40 of the top students were selected for the computer and English class. And their teacher made the most of the art supplies I had left in making his classroom a true learning environment. The moment I had been waiting for finally came when we held our very first library hour. I had brought two 70-pound duffel bags full of toys, puzzles, art supplies, books, maps, and globes, 
The children devoured the materials like happy hyenas ravenous to learn. The children are reading, but they want to go to secondary school. The teachers are teaching, but they are only paid $13 per month. Please help us continue to light the path to their future.